Hi, I'm Elias Weidemann from Cape Town and I'd like to talk to you about search engine submission. Uh, but first, something general uh, in the industry, um, there's a lot of vibe and things change all the time. The Apple iPhone 5 has just been released um, and the Google Dance is back, which is the uh, reference to the regular changing of Google's algorithm, which will upset the ranking. So one day a certain website will be on top, the next day it won't be there anymore, uh, which of course causes a lot of uh, concern and uh, interesting results in the industry. But back to um, search engine submission. Uh, the term is actually a misnomer because you're not submitting a search engine, you're actually submitting a website address to a search engine uh, for its inclusion in the index. Uh, but we, we're used to that in the industry. We've got search engine optimization, which is actually not quite accurate either. You're not optimizing a search engine, you're optimizing a web page for the search engine to be able to index properly. But for now, we'll stick to these, uh, the blue terms because that's what we all know about in industry. And just briefly, search engine submission or website address submission involves um, you telling the search engine about possibly a new domain, a new URL, um, so that they know about it, so they can index it, uh, so that your address will appear in the results. It won't happen automatically, and we'll come back to that further on. Um, before we actually talk about search engine submission, something general about crawlers and the way search engines work. Um, a crawler, indicated by a little blue spider there, is also called a spider or a bot or a robot. It's simply a program that the search engines send out across the internet uh, to trawl and whatever websites they find, they take the information they find in there, as indicated here, and they store it in the so-called index which theoretically is just a big file maintained by the search engine with the contents of all these millions if not billions of web pages and when a user now sits at his or her computer and types in a search query and presses enter basically they query the index and the information that the algorithm decides is relevant comes back from the index to the user screen so this is a normal situation, assuming that the crawler knows about these web pages. It won't visit them if it doesn't know about their existence. Um, you might ask the question, what happens if I don't submit uh, my website to search engines? Now let's go through a scenario on this side. Let's say you've got a new product or service called XYZ. You register a domain called www.xyz.com and you write a website or get somebody to do it for you. You host the website, assuming it's designed perfectly well and uh, it really is a good website. And you now sit back and wait for the crawlers to come and visit so that you can appear in the results. Now, the sad thing is nothing will happen. Um, the crawler will not know about this website, um, except if you do one of two things, it'll be blocked. Those two things, firstly, manual submission, which is what this video is about, and we'll get to that just now. Or secondly, if there happens to be another website or websites with links from themselves back to your one, then the crawlers will eventually find it, assuming the other website is indexed. Uh, but that might take longer, and that is a, a chance you might not want to take. Uh, and of course, if the crawler cannot get to your website, it cannot put it in the index and the user will never see it. Um, so if there's no submission done of a new domain and if there's no link to it, it will be forever staying in obscurity and the search crawlers will never find it. Now we get to the actual submission stage. First, uh, submitting to Google. Uh, now you might even ask the question, why submit to Google? Uh, the last time uh, I looked at figures, Google's coverage was just below 90% of the world traffic, which means uh, it's almost three times as big as all the competitors put together. So whether you're a Google lover or a Google hater, it doesn't matter. You've got to be indexed by Google. If you're not, you might as well be invisible to most of the internet users out there. So to submit your site to Google, you could go to the homepage, google.com, and find your way drilling down through there, although it's maybe not always very obvious. 
Alternatively, you can go to google.com forward slash add URL without any spaces, which takes you directly to the submission page. Um, that's shown over here, where they simply ask you the URL. You must type in uh, the address of your website. And then it gives you the familiar capture box where you have to type in uh, one or two, in this case, two different words with a space in between, um, which is just there to make sure that you're a human being and not an automated program trying to, to spam the search engines. Um, in, in this case, at this stage, one of the two words is often easy to follow and the other one, in this case, the second one is a bit more difficult. Uh, if you battle with it, you simply try again and again until you get it right. And then you click on submit at the bottom and you should get a next screen coming back saying uh, your submission has been successful and then you simply have to wait uh, until it's indexed. Secondly, submitting to Bing. The reason why you should consider submitting your website address to Bing is that Bing and Yahoo alternatively are taking the second and the third place after Google in the search engine market. Um, Bing is of course run by Microsoft and they are not only producing results for themselves but also for Yahoo. Um, as of a few months ago you couldn't even submit uh, a website to Yahoo anymore. So yes, secondly Bing, you can go again as before to the home page www.bing.com or um, a slightly longer address forward slash webmaster forward slash submit site page dot ASPX or one word no spaces. And again, as before with Google, you'll get to uh, a screen like this one, where it first asks you to type in your website address, and then again a capture. In this case, it's normally one word, but it's case sensitive. They are uppercase and lowercase mixed. And then when you're finished, again, click on submit. And once again, you'll get a screen saying your, your submission has been successful. And then you have to wait until Bing indexes you. Uh, thirdly, submitting to DMOS, also called the Open Directory Project. Um, now, DMOS is a directory as opposed to the previous two, which are search engines, which means it operates in a slightly different way. It still has a search box, but normally you go to the home page, which is over here, which consists of many subdirectories where you can click and click again and drill down, as they call it, until you find what you want. The submission process is slightly different and a bit longer than the first two, but it's still fairly simple. Again, you go to the homepage, dmas.org, and you'll find the familiar screen with the blue and green uh, writing. And you don't submit at this stage. There is no unique once-only submission page. You start drilling down on the homepage to try and find the category where your website belongs best. So you might drill through one, two, three, four levels, however far you have to go until you get to, in this case, um, a page where you think, right, this is the best match between my website and the categories they provide. And on this page, in the top right hand corner, you will find a suggest URL link where you can then click. And then you get a page which not only asks you for the URL, but some other information um, that you have to provide as well. In another video, I'll talk about meta tags, description and title tags, which you can sensibly use if they were written to fill in this form. Um, so yes, DMOS takes a bit longer. Again, you click at the bottom to submit and then it goes into a queue where a human being volunteers, there's about 90,000 of them at the last count, um, will look at your submission when it gets to the front of the queue and then decide if it fits the category and if it's a good website and if it is it will include it in the index if your if your match of category was not so good this human might decide to send it to another human of a different category and it'll then unfortunately go into the back of the queue and the delay before your your site gets indexed will then increase so important that when you start that you actually drill down uh, properly and make sure that you find what you consider to be the best match between the content of your website and the naming of the category as you go down through the list. Right, uh, towards the end, maybe there's some questions you might have. For example, how long does it take from the moment that you've submitted the, the URL until the crawlers come to visit? Just at this point, note that being indexed, in other words, the crawlers finding your website doesn't guarantee anything past that point. It guarantees that yes, your, your detail is in the index. It doesn't mean you're going to rank well or rank badly. 
It doesn't mean you're going to rank at all. That depends on other factors, website visibility and many other things and PPC, which we'll discuss elsewhere. But let's assume you've now submitted on day one. Uh, one of my students has done some research work, thank you Herbert, on, on indexing time. And we found that in a typical situation, it took minimum five days and a maximum of 33 days for a given website to be indexed with an average of 19 days. Um, this is now across three search engines, Google, Yahoo and Bing, um, on two different sets of sites and both were brand new. They were not, have not been indexed before, they've been newly registered. So yes, on the average you can say, give it about three weeks typically uh, from the day you submit until you've been visited by the crawlers. And maybe a final question you might have, how do you know whether or not your site has been indexed? Uh, when you go to the normal Google search box, you can simply type in the Google operator site, colon, and www.xyz.com or whatever your domain is. Uh, press enter. Uh, this is all one word without spaces. Um, and on the resulting screen, you'll either say, see that there's nothing listed. In other words, your site has not been indexed yet, your domain. Or you'll get one or more normal Google results showing you uh, different pages of that subdomain. Um, indicating that those pages have been indexed, which means you can relax and there's nothing more you can do at that stage. At this point, maybe just take note to beware of so-called auto submissions or FFAs, free for all, where um, many websites uh, advertise a service for a nominal fee, a few dollars or euros or pounds, uh, saying that they will submit your domain to hundreds or even thousands of search engines, which already should raise a bit of a red flag. There are not thousands of search engines around. Um, now, I'm not saying all of them are suspect, but in many cases, what they do, they identify your email address as a live email address because you provided it to them and they then sell that to other services for, for spam purposes. Even worse, possibly, they do um, submit your, your um, domain, but they also list it on uh, so-called spam indexing pages where there are hundreds or thousands of other links uh, creating um, uh, an unnatural access type situation which the search engines pick up. Uh, it's, it is not a natural uh, thing to have one web page with 10,000 addresses and nothing else on there. So in general stay away from the automatic submissions and rather do it manually as we've indicated before. So to summarize briefly, if you have a website, if it's a brand new domain, uh, that's good maybe because you've obviously made a choice of a domain that you like and that, that suits your business. Uh, but you've got a disadvantage in terms of it being brand new and not being known with, it, with the search engines. Secondly, then do your manual submissions as indicated. Um, thirdly, monitor uh, that the crawlers actually have visited you and that you are indexed. And fourthly, and this is the topic of another video, monitor your website visibility over a period of time to see how well you rank for certain keywords or key phrases.